In today's video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in order to ace your interview with Meta. I'm gonna go over actual Meta interview questions, teach you how to answer them. We're gonna go over their mission statement and we're gonna go through their cultural values. That way, when you interview with them, you can absolutely crush it. If you watch this video from the beginning to the end, you will be in position to absolutely dominate your interview with Meta. Let's go. Now, like many mission-driven organizations, Meta's mission statement is pretty important to them. So when you're gonna go and interview, it makes sense for you to know that. So their mission statement is, Meta's mission is to give people the power to build a community and bring the world closer together. So when you think about their products, their offering, and how, you're, um, how people are meant to leverage their product, that makes sense. But you wanna know that going into it. Now, one of the things I would advise you to do is go to this website right here. Um, this website right here, it talks all about their cultural values. Now, their cultural values are really important to them, so we're gonna take a minute before we go into the interview questions and answers to go through their cultural values. That way, you know what they are, and it makes sense to pay attention here because they actually incorporate their cultural values into several of these interview questions. Now, Meta has six cultural values. Let's go through them now. Now, I'm gonna bring this up on the screen here, but the first one is move fast. Now this says move fast helps us to build uh, and learn faster than anyone else. This means acting with urgency and not waiting until next week to do something you could do today. At our scale, this also means continuously working to increase the velocity of our highest priority initiatives by methodically removing barriers that get in the way. It's about moving fast together in one direction as a company, not just individuals. So you can see that's pretty important. It talks about their mindset and how they function as a company. It makes sense for you to know that. Now their next cultural value is focus on long-term impact. What they say here is focus on long-term impact and emphasizes long-term thinking and encourages us to extend the timeline for the impact we have rather than optimizing for near-term wins. We should take on the challenges that will be the most impactful even if the full result won't be seen for years. Again, a bit of mindset and the way they approach problems makes a ton of sense for you to be familiar with this as you go into interviewing with them, talking with them, and discussing the roles. The next one is really cool, build awesome things. And they say here, build awesome things pushes us to ship things that are not just good, but also awe-inspiring. We've already built products that are useful to billions of people, but in our next chapter, we'll focus, on, we'll focus more on inspiring people as well. This quality bar should apply to everything we do. So you see right there, quality is really important, future thinking is really important, and they're talking about building inspirational, transformative things. That should be really apparent to you when you go in and you interview with them, and you start to talk about them, their mission, and why you're inspired for the company. These are things you wanna remember. Their next value is live in the future. Live in the future guides us to build the future of distributed work that we want, where opportunity isn't limited by geography. This means operating as a distributed first company and being the early adopters of future products we're building to help people feel present together no matter where they are. Again, this is a little bit about mindset and where they're headed. They are a mission-driven organization with a focus on technology and community. So it makes sense for you to know this as you answer interview questions. Their next one is be direct and respect your colleagues. Be direct and respect your colleagues is about creating a culture where we are straightforward and willing to have conversations with each other at the same time. We are also respectful and when we share feedback, we recognize that many of the world's leading experts work here. This is just about how you're gonna to partner together and the way they see teaming. This is critical to an organization this size um, and this geographically diverse. So it is important to remember that when you're talking about working with teams, what's important to you in a team, um, something to certainly to keep top of mind. Their last value is Meta, MetaMates Me. Meta Metamates Me is about being good stewards of our company and mission. It's about the sense of responsibility we have for our collective success and to each other as teammates. It's about taking care of our company and each other. Now, as you go through these values, I noticed a few common themes and it makes sense for you to be aware of these, but there's a lot about future and where they're going and how they wanna evolve and grow as a company. There's a lot about community and how they wanna enable people who are geographically diverse to exist in a space um, where everybody can be, and there's a lot about being a good teammate. So I think these are themes that it makes sense to keep in mind as you go through this interview process. Now, let's get into the actual interview questions and the answers. Now, the first question you're gonna get um, uh, with Meta is introduce yourself. This is really important here, but when someone starts with this, I think it's key to move quickly and efficiently through the thing. So start with a little bit about your background, maybe where you're from, people in your family, where you grew up, then go to your passions. You know, some of the things I'm passionate about are A, B, and C. 
bonus points if you can tie them into role responsibility. For example, if it's tech, maybe you want to talk about programming in your free time, stuff that you do that's technology adjacent. Um, that you're passionate about and then finally give them a quick and efficient summary of your career thus far and the direction you're headed Now this next question is huge. It's why do you want to work for meta anytime you go into uh, an interview with a company you want to be able to um, articulate why working for them would be interesting to you. So for every single company you interview at for the rest of your life, this is always key. But always be ready for this question. Talk about something company related, then narrow into the role. So you could talk about their mission. So, you know, I was really inspired by your cultural values. When I read through, you know, your feeling of community and the future, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a futurist and I'm always future thinking and I find that to be really inspiring. Then transition to the actual role. And I feel like this role is exciting because I can contribute that directly by A, B, and C. The key to answering this question is to always talk about something specific to the company that's inspiring to you and then close it out talking about the role and how you can contribute to that and how that's motivating and exciting for you. This next one's great, but you wouldn't be able to answer it if you weren't familiar with their cultural values. And it goes, describe a previous work situation where you demonstrated one of Facebook's core values. So this gives you a great opportunity to pick any of those six and incorporate it in. So read through those again, find one that makes sense for you, and then find a way to share an answer. So one of the things that I might pick is be direct and respect your colleagues. So this would be a great opportunity for you to share a story about how you use some courageous candor to share some tough, but important feedback with a colleague of yours, and then you both were better for it at the end. So pick any one of these values that really resonates with you, make that your answer. The next question is an oldie, but a goodie, and it's one you should be prepared to answer, and it's tell me about a situation you failed. Whenever I get this interview question, I always tell people to use the first 50% rule. First 50% means you pick a situation that happened in the first 50% of your career. That way you put a little bit of distance. It's not something you did yesterday. It's something real, relevant, but in the first half of your career. Um, you also want to make sure it's nothing too dire, so it wasn't you burned down a facility you were in, and not too trivial, like I forgot a pencil at home and I wasn't ready to write all the things I wanted to write that day, right? It can't be too drastic, too much of a big deal, or too much of a fake answer, right? It's got to be something in the middle that is understandable, but not too dire, not too trivial. The last thing that you need to share when you're answering this question is how you were better for it. You failed, but you learned from it, and now you were a stronger professional. The next question is, tell me about your best collaboration experience. This is an awesome opportunity for you to share a major accomplishment. Everybody should go into every single interview they do with stories they want to tell that put them in a good light and can impress the hiring manager, recruiter, or HR person. So this is a great opportunity for you to have a story in which you collaborated or led a project um, and you can share it here. So. Um, I would pick something in which you collaborated knowing that you know they place an emphasis on geographical diversity. Maybe it's uh, a team that you worked with that were in different areas. But remember, you wanna be clear, uh, concise. You wanna move through this quickly. This is a question that should take you 45 to 130 seconds to answer. And you wanna talk about there how you were a really good teammate. I love this question. This next question, you wouldn't be able to answer if you didn't know their mission because the question is, how would you contribute positively to, um, to Meta's, excuse me, Meta's mission? And again, they wanna bring the world closer together, right? That's at the core of their mission statement. So whatever role you're going to be doing, just think of a way to tie that in. If you were in sales, maybe you know there's a way that in your function, in your day-to-day, -day, what you're gonna be doing is bringing the world closer together. Obviously, if you're in something uh, computer-related, IT, front-end, back-end development, whatever it is, it's gonna be easy to talk about how you can contribute to continue building their products that ultimately make bringing the world closer together, making the world smaller is easier. But if you don't know their mission statement, you are never going to be able to answer this question. The next question is a good one. I've asked it before and it's tell me what a former colleague would say about you. So this is basically a great way for um, an interviewer to have you describe yourself, but through the lens of another person. So there is things that always sound good here. You know, my teammates would describe me as hardworking, um, as committed. You know, my teammates would uh, describe me as someone who is always willing to lend a hand. My teammates would describe me as someone who doesn't necessarily need direction, but is able to understand the problem and solve it without someone um, needing to tell me step by step, you know, what I need to do. There are a lot of good ways, but just think about positive attributes that accurately describe you that would be a better 
benefit to this role and you're gonna do great. The next one, another classic, why do you wanna leave your job? So a few things here. Um, key, it is important to resist the urge to talk negatively about your current company, boss, or teammate. Don't do that, it'll never serve you. In a perfect world, what you're doing here is you're saying, in my current job, I don't get to do blank. And that's why I'm interested in looking. And that blank, that thing that you don't get to do, is something you get to do in this job. So. You know, you're saying, you know, I really like my company and I'm not really actively looking, but I've always respected Meta. And when I took a look at this job description, you know, I realized I've been wanting to do more blank. I don't get to do it in my current job, but it's a big portion of the responsibility according to the job description I looked at. So that really inspired me to pursue this because that's exactly where I want to be taking my career. That is a great way to answer this question. If you answer the question like that, I mean, slam dunk. The next question is what are your strengths? This is an easy one. Just make it something in the job description, right? So you're gonna get the job description. You'll look through it and they'll talk about different skills, competencies, behaviors, whatever it is. And you wanna make sure it aligns. So, you know, think of the top couple of bullet points of things that you need to be able to do effectively in the new role. And if that is a strength of yours, you wanna use this as an opportunity to highlight that strength and um, you know, just the cohesion between your skills and what they require. Great opportunity to do that. Now this last question is a good one. It's a behavioral interview question and it's uh, being able to work under pressure is important here at Meta. Describe a time when you completed a difficult task whilst under pressure. Um, so first and foremost, this is a behavioral interview question because they say, tell me about a time when. It basically prompts you to recount a story in which you did something and describe your behavior in that moment. Those are behavioral interview questions. And whenever you get that, you wanna use the STAR method. That's situation, task, action, result. But it's basically a framework to allow you to walk through a story and answer the interview question effectively. Now, this could be something that's probably gonna take you between a minute and a half and two and a half minutes to answer. If you don't at least take that amount of time, you're probably not going in depth enough. And if you go over that, you're taking too long to answer this interview question. But again, start with a situation. Um, what, you know, what was the situation you're in? What was the task you had to complete? What was your specific action? What was the result? Um, but remember, this is a bit about strategy. Describe a time you completed a difficult task while under pressure. So give them a bit of your strategy in a situation like that. Um, and then lastly, um, two more things. The last thing you wanna do, or second to last rather, is what was the lesson here? You wanna share the lesson you learned and while you're better, you know, better for it, right? Just like the thing earlier, this was a tough situation, but I'm better for it having experience blank. And then lastly, this is really important, you need to share that those type of um, environments motivate you. Whenever they give you a behavioral interview question, they're asking about a specific situation, that's a situation you're likely to encounter in that role. So you wanna tell them, like, this is the type of environment I like. Um, when I had, um, you know, when I had a, a difficult task and it was under pressure, those are kind of the moments I show up in. They motivate me and they, those are the times where I feel like I, I do my best work, right? So you wanna end with letting them know, hey, I'm not gonna shy away from moments like that. So here it is, that's the video. It's everything you, uh, you really need to know for your interview with Meta, but I want you to watch this video. This video right here is going to teach you things that'll make you better in every single interview you do for the rest of your life, including this one. So this is a good one-two punch. Watch this video next.